We can just have that in C. Okay. Oh crap, this isn't plugged in anymore, brother. Here, the cable should be down there. Did it get unplugged? Um. Oh, here we go. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, let's program in the... Okay, low C. No, a little higher. Uh, one octave higher. Oh, that's the harpsichord. Okay, wait. One sec. Oh, it's because it has the okay oxygen twenty-five. Okay, what I'm gonna do? Dun, 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 dun. Okay, we're gonna go to um, warm staccatos. Multiply the track. Delete the track. Bam. So now we have. Now we're gonna go into arpeggiator. Here, one sec. And right, we're gonna do dun, dun. Dun 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 Okay, so now it's like maybe we can do a little bit lower. And we can have a synth. Okay, yeah, play that. Oh yeah. All right, get ready. All right, I'll tell you when. Ready? Yeah, it's C minor. Uh, okay, we were pretty much on. Make that start on 25. Turn it on. Somebody asked, um, I need an alpha synth with monster brass. Okay, we can do that. So let's copy. Don't, don't get rid of that, because that's dumb. You didn't do it, it was my fault. I'm dumb. I'm stupid. Okay. Bam. Yeah, it needs like a dun 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 and we'll do that with the brass. So, just do it like on the down bass, like dun 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 dun. dun. So like, so do like, do like a dun 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 dun, dun. and do it like on the. Like. So all right, so I'll I'll go ahead and lay this one that one sec. Made it like don't 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 and then it would lead into the dur, dur, dur. Oh 
Oh gosh, that is like cluster. That's like a cluster mess. Dun 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 dun. Bam. sort of go in here and oh dude that's like that's like Hans Zimmer stuff right okay wait we can we can do like no <laughs> okay use the mod wheel control the mod wheel we're gonna do like the uh um what should we call it what what note is that D minor. Okay, keep it. Keep the pedal note on D minor. Ready? Not the D minor chord. Just have the D minor octave. Ready? head with the with the mini keyboard. Yeah, so I was thinking like a okay. Like the Trevor Morris, like Vikings theme. That's Majestica for you. Okay, anyways, back to the synth line. Oh, to go into this section? Yeah. Good idea. Oops, crap. I forgot I have to select that. glue these together.
Bam, like a boss. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Bam. I forgot about the... I was gonna start clapping. I forgot, yeah, I forgot about the, the B. Damn B! Ugh. It comes out of freaking nowhere. It's all my fault that I chose to modulate. Obviously. Oh, that could be the G minor. And he's like some type of like high string Austin. I don't know. Damn, why did the drums? They they freaking stopped. Bro, why'd they stop? Shakabam. Gonna grab this MIDI, gonna hold her tight. Gonna extend that MIDI track to add. So I don't know. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's the reason why. These are two separate tracks, so I'll go ahead and sort of overlapped. Ha! Ooh, that's a good question. Do you use certain modes for action music? Um, yeah, you, I mean, like, you sometimes can. Like, some, some composers use, like, um... Like, John Williams uses the Lydian mode at the end of, of, of Harry Potter, and uh, Howard Shore uses a lot of modal writing in his music. Uh, I just sort of, I just sort of write natural. I mean, if I need like inspiration, I'll go back to the modes um, and everything. But no, when it comes to like writing specifically off of modes, not necessarily. I actually do on that action cue. I thought that. Oh yeah, which one, yeah. which one was that? The. Uh... So okay, so just to introduce Andrew Rockman, I know this guy's been talking a lot, but he is unbelievable. He's an unbelievable composer, a uh, really good friend of mine. Um, and he, me, him and I worked on the Obscurity um, uh, score together, which is the score for my film. Um, wow, I spelled beginning wrong. Okay, yeah, the confrontation. Okay. Yeah, confrontation. Yeah, we, we, can, we can just play so this, sections of it. Yeah, like this, the is the, this is the score. Yeah, this yeah. is the score for Obscurity. Um, and it was composed by him and I. Uh, and um, he had the best parts, though, because he's awesome. Okay, so this is the confrontation scene. So this is um, one of the main climactic scenes in the film. So here we go.
anyways, yeah, it's like it's like a really really awesome piece. How did you use modes in that piece? Okay, the beginning is basically a tone mm -hmm. where there's the fast drums yeah. and stuff, but the middle section that s sort of repeats and stuff um, that is um, D diminished half a tone whole tone scale. So that's kind of the diminished scale is kind of the hallmark of the um, action and horror music. So mm -hmm. at the end of this, though, it switches to um, the harmonic minor scale, which is also another um, thing that people like to use for action music. Yeah. Uh, how do you know when to get out of, let's say, uh, from C minor, like you were doing the C minor, then the B major, etc.? Okay, so that was um, that was just like a harmonic uh, modulation. So like, I felt as though it was time to exit the key of C minor. So I was like, okay, what's the best way for me to get to the key of C minor? And I was like, okay, B major because it's the dominant, um, which means it's the fifth of the E minor chord. So I was like, okay, it's probably the best way. And it was pretty, it was pretty good on v voice voice leading for what I was doing. So it was like. Um, And then, yeah, and so that's that's what made that nice. And if you listen to the way that like you do the chords, like the chords in specific are are voice led um, correctly. Um, so for example, I use the first inversion of the C minor chord, then the first inversion of this. Uh, am I wrong or do you use plenty of presets in terms of sounds? I found that some liars like Abaddon have, uh, for example, the strings are already set out perfectly and it makes everything easier but gives you a little control over the sound itself. Uh, the scores start to sound the same every time with every composer since they are all sounding the same. Um, I wouldn't say my music all sounds the same. Uh, I would say that I used samples to get across uh, what type of music I, I would, like the music that I'm trying to get across in my head. So I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that that just because you use similar patches doesn't mean all the music sounds the same. Ashton and chat guys, useful tool for setting up cues for video. Oh, that is a cool tool. Okay, anyways. Let's go to that G minor one. Damn it, it's because of the. It's recorded far away from here because of the damn ram. Okay. Oh, yeah, I did that right. Crap, I thought I did it wrong. It's not turned on. But 
that one came in too early. using that F sharp. So it's like I make it outside of the track and then I bring it to where it needs to be. Yeah, sure. Uh, so modulation is something, uh, modulation pretty much in general terms is when you want to get from one key to the next key. And there's many different ways in which you can modulate. So let's just open up a piano here and, and look at some different ways that modulation um, is possible um, inside, of, inside of film music. So, whoa, where's my pianos? Crap. Oh, bam. Okay. So for example, like, Somebody like Alan Silvestri or John Williams, a lot of the times they will just, you know, they'll modulate like a full step up without even like setting it up at all, which is amazing because their themes are so soaring and so beautiful that they can do that quite easily. So for example, like the Forrest Gump theme, like which is like the... Or whatever, like he literally just goes from C major. And it, and it like it totally works. Um, so that's one way to modulate. Of course, another way to modulate. Let's say you're like in like in like C major. And so we're on F. And then if we make an F seven. For example, as a way to modulate. So I, I was on C at first, and then when I went to the dominant of, uh, or the fourth of C, F major, I made that a seventh, and then I went to B major, and now I'm in the key of B major. And if I really want to announce that I'm on the key of B major, I'll probably use the dominant somehow, which is F. I just modulated like three different times in that short amount of time. Uh, and that can work in film music a lot. Like a lot of the times in film music, people won't even set up modulations. Like for example, if there's like an action cue and there's just some really just six string lines going on like. They'll just... So they'll just like go up the minor third. It's like. You know, modulations could be could be really really cool, um, and using that using this um, chord, using so pretty much you have the one and the five of the chord in your right hand. So like let's say you have an A major chord, you have A and E, and then if you have, and then you have the C sharp in your left hand, 
because that voice leads right into that chord. So if you have like a, like a C major, it really leads to F and you know, to F. So like for example in John Williams scores, like Far and Away, which we were looking at, you know, he does like the My scores, I sort of, uh, you know, the whole idea of third is like a. I sort of took that whole idea of modulation because, like I said, modulation is such a big um, sort of task, um, and a lot of people will, you know, deal with it differently. So, like, you could just automatically go to that new key, or you could set it up, you know, like I did with that whole jazz tune. So if, I'll, I'll just play it again if you guys didn't hear play it on this piano. Yeah. That's like I just modulated from G minor to C major, right? So, practical example. Okay, yeah, well, like my example was, let's say we start on C major, right? We're in C. And now we're on F in the C major scale. And then we make that a seventh. Now we just modulated, you know, to B flat major by using that, you know, because we have things called tonics, sub uh, subdominant, dominant, and so like the tonic is the one of every chord or every every key, every scale, and then the four being the F uh, being is the subdominant, and then you have the dominant, which is like the G. So if you have like G seven, it leads into C. That'd be the better voice leading thing to do. What scale is that you were doing in your right hand? Oh, it was like it was like a like a C minor seven. So So one modulation technique is one to four, and then it leads to the major seventh of that first key. No, okay, so what I was doing on that instance is I was going from C to F, the subdominant, and then I was making that F, I was adding in that, that seventh, right? So we have C is our main key, right? And then we go from C to the F chord, and the F chord is our subdominant of that key. Right? And so the subdominant means it's the fourth. So we added in the seventh of that. It leads into B flat because that is the dominant of B flat, right? So we use this like relative idea. So like like that dominant was relative to that chord. Does that does that make sense for you? Um, why can't you play that directly on the track itself? What is he, what is he talking about? I don't know what he's talking about. Whoa, that sounded like Stranger Things. I love the Stranger Things thing. That's the Stranger Things arpeggio. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Crap, 
started one earlier. Damn this thing. Oh, Evan Evans. Hi, Evans. Hey, Evan. Evan, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> to go back to what I was saying with the whole jazz thing, I mean, or with the whole modulation thing. So you really want to decide what, you know, that chord is, what is it relative to? So for example, if it's relative to one specific chord by the dominant, then you, of course, want to make that chord a dominant so that you can go to the chord that it's relative to. So for example, let me just play that again and I'm going to describe exactly what I'm doing. So. So now I'm going to go to F. And now I made that a seventh. So then I, I made that G minor, which is a G minor, a G major, and then I went to... Thanks, man. But yeah, like you want, like you want to be able to use those scales to be able to get you from point A, you know, to point B. So, you know, for example, I was just playing those minor set. So yeah, um, that was that. So you know that was like that was strictly improv. Like I had no idea what the hell I was playing there. But you know when you study music theory, these things just become, these things really become a part of your playing. Like you learn these music theory tactics, and they automatically they automatically settle in you, so that when you do. So those fast licks are in the key you are in. Yes, exactly. And like since I was playing that G minor 7 chord, I was making scales that really accommodated that specific chord. So I was, you know, I was... So, um, Johan, if you're near a piano, go ahead and try this. Go ahead and try this. Ready? So I'm going to describe what to do. Uh, go ahead and like open up a piano patch if you're at your keyboard or whatever. And um, take G minor, right? G minor. Make it a major. And then go to C minor. Then make that a major. And that's using classical music all the time. Like there's that one piece uh, by Chopin. It's like the, uh, damn this cable. Son of a... Okay. So there's like that... You should get oh, and I played that wrong thing. Yeah, it's like... Uh... these notes over here. 
No, it was it was not Chopin. That was <laughs> that first part, like the or whatever, like and then like the and then like the. Like that, like that was, yeah, it, w it wasn't like legit Chopin. I'm not going to sit here and claim that, you know, like this is the Moonlight Sonata, like. I forget how to play that piece. Something like it. Yeah. Then it goes to the, the E minor, but yeah. Uh literally apply that to any scene and it works yeah yeah i mean truly like these classical things like that that whole thing it works like it totally works um and you can really adapt that to truly anything okay so anyways um i want to go ahead and get this going on the high strings hopefully it won't shut me off here You know what? This this patch has like a delay on it, or something. Not like a delay plugin, but like it has a weird delay. I'm gonna play with the Metropolis Arc High String Awesomeness thing. See if we'll see if like uh I'm humming the Alan Silvestri score to uh Christmas story. because it wasn't on, okay. Oh shit. Sorry about my language, guys. That's nothing compared to Daniel James. He said some of the weirdest stuff on live stream. I have no idea. <laughs> Honestly. Smexy, schmex. Okay, let's watch it from the beginning. Let's turn on the audio, too.
one specific like Oh hell yeah. That's RS studio percussion by the way. Uh do I have a compressor? Yes. Look at this beautiful baby right here. <laughs> no, I don't know what port is. I'm 16 years old. What? I obviously don't know what port is. Other than Daniel James, right? He has he has these things called port cast, man. He gets drunk in front of people on live stream. How is that? I mean, I'm drinking a Red Bull energy drink right now. So that's, I'm just trying to stay energized, but I mean, I'm not gonna like get drunk in front of you guys. I mean, I don't wanna make a fool out of myself. Uh, but I got a bottle downstairs if you like some. You know, man, I, I, wor I work so much, I probably need a little bit more. All right, well, you know what we're gonna do on that? I think it has a little bit of, do you think that that is like, do you think we should like move that backward a little bit? You need I think it's epo a little quick. You need to epoxidize that. Yeah. Yeah. Da, da, da. You know, in honor, in honor of Daniel James's drunkness on live stream, I'm going to play you guys the best thing that has ever been written, and that is the stream of Christmas while Daniel James was drunk. Just in case you guys haven't been paying attention, my name's Daniel James, and uh, this is a <laughs> film scoring boot camp live. So, um, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, no, Daniel James is literally the coolest guy. Like, he's he's absolutely amazing. I love that guy. Um, but yeah, that was written while somebody was drunk. Um, there is no compressor setting in the piano. Here's the Santa. <laughs> How y'all doing? It's Daniel James. Could you guys imagine Daniel James with like a uh, like a hood accent? Yo, how y'all doing? It's Daniel James. Cause I did that uh... Gosh. Oh, here it is. Hey guys, Daniel James here. Could you imagine like, yo guys, Daniel James here, coming to you from Compton. We're gonna be composing some orchestral cinematic music today. Could you imagine that? <laughs> just imagine, just do it again, right? Hey guys, da Daniel James here. I love it, I love it, no. But did you guys hear what I did with this song? So okay, so pretty much, I got this song and there was no music with it, and so I wrote music to it. And this was like, this was like early January, so I was not really that good. I'll just skip it. Ah, a thought for destruction, and it's a thought, a thought for destruction. And then it bam. And it's a thought. But anyway, 
anyways, uh, so earlier we were talking about uh, modulation, uh, and we were talking about how to get from one key to the next. Uh, so I'm just I'm gonna give you guys a little example of how I've done that personally. Um, well, I, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't say modulation. I just say um, going from key to key to key randomly and not necessarily doing it logically, but it's sounding good. Like this is this is an example. Crap, sorry. Okay, what I was saying is that in this world, there is articulations called staccato. And staccato are played quick, um, and uh, they sound nice sometimes. Uh, and there is one library in specific, Metropolis Arc, that has the best, the best staccato known to man. And that is this. <laughs> yeah, and that's like, it's the best thing ever. Um, Besides that a lot. Uh. <laughs> yeah, uh, but anyways, I use, I use that staccato patch actually on this score in Justice League. That is the epicness that is Metropolis Arc. Um, 
Okay, so anyways, uh, let's see what else we have here. I'm gonna have to head out at right around in right around ten minutes. I have a movie to see. Um, Let's watch this again. <laughs> 